Thank you, Dr. Winster. Well, thank you, Chairman Turner, Ranking Member Hines, and all of you for being here today. Director Haynes, uh, you, you cut right to it today about the challenges that we face as, as a nation, the threats that we have. Threats to our country are not new, but some of the forms of those threats uh, are new. And, and I want to talk about that a little bit. The Chinese Communist Party is very desert, uh, assertive. They want to destabilize us as much as they can, and they're, they're getting pretty good at it. So the growing concerns I have are the development of adversaries, uh, biological weapons is a great concern to me, and also the flow of illicit fentanyl coming into our country, which even in a meeting with the Chinese ambassador, he admitted we sell the precursors. Those are legal products. You know, it's somebody else's problem after that. Well, it is our problem, and I do want to hold those accountable for these uh, efforts to be held accountable at, at, at some point, and we've got to do a better job of that. And I think we need to address and invest in so the resources we need to, to stop the scourge of this uh, of fentanyl, illicit fentanyl, and also the creation of bioweapons is something we should be greatly concerned about, as with any weapon an adversary may carry. Uh, so it's our responsibility, I think, uh, to really work together on these, these things as best we can. We had a panel a few weeks ago, Dr. Heather Wilson was there, and I asked how we could work together. Uh, a little bit better in her, in her eyes. And she mentioned how the law requires members of this committee to be kept fully and currently informed of the intelligence activities of the United States. That's this committee. It's not every member of Congress. It's not the general public. And we all get that. But for this committee, uh, it, it has to happen. And we need to insist upon that. And we also need to insist on our side uh, that we engender trust to the seriousness of this committee and the work that we have to do and our own professional responsibilities in this relationship. And, and I think we're at that point. I really do with, with this committee right now. But we have the responsibility of oversight as well as working with uh, all of you. And in my mind, there can be no walls between us. There can be walls around us at times. There needs to be walls around us at times. But there should be no walls between, between us if we're going to be effective. And we really can only move at the speed of trust. And I feel like I've uh, developed relationships with, with all of you. Uh, it's been very helpful to the work that we do on this committee. And I thank you for that. Uh, sometimes we can do a little bit more. And so, uh, Director Haynes, I know this committee has written you a few times about who the intelligence community consulted with regarding the assessment of COVID-19 and its origins. Now, I chair the select subcommittee on the pandemic. All things with the pandemic and origins of COVID is, is important. And even yesterday in our hearing, every, every person on the committee, bipartisan, and every one of our panelists said, finding the origins of COVID is an important project we need to continue and try to get to. And we can go into all those reasons. Um, you know, why is, it why is it important, though, that it, for us to have this information and to know who the experts are? And, uh, you know, if we hear something like, it's our policy not to tell you on the committee who we spoke to, that's a problem. And it is important who you spoke to. Because if who someone spoke to may have some personal bias uh, or other agenda or political bias towards their conclusions. I mean, look, you see, you've seen all these agencies with different conclusions. Well, why is that? Well, part of that may be depending upon who they talk to. So that is important that we get that information. And it, it's, it's my understanding that the DOE would be willing to show us their underlying report, especially their updated report. But uh, since OD and I owns the assessment, you'd have to approve that. So what I'm going to ask is that you would approve that and, and get us that information so that we can move forward. And uh, I would hope that we can also get the information of actually who they talk to. This, it's important to this committee. It's important to the country. Uh, so um, I guess I'm just asking, would you commit to that at this time? Thank you so much, Congressman. I, I know this is an issue that we've talked about before, right. and I think First of all, on the DOE assessment, absolutely, I, I suspect it would have to be in classified form. I'm sure it's sure. a classified report, but it, it, 
more than happy to share any uh, final assessment that they've done if they're comfortable with it. I can't imagine myself standing in the way, so I don't know what that is, but we'll, we'll look into that and get back to you quickly. I think on the more general issue, let me just put a few things down. I think one problem for us is that we obviously want to be able to consult with outside expertise, including academics, variety of other experts in you know fields uh, related to uh, COVID-19, but also a series of other areas that we work in. And often for uh, many academics that we consult with, it's not something they want to, they do not want to be known as consulting with the intelligence community. It creates challenges for them. Yeah, and if I may, I'm, talk, I'm but, talking about in a classified setting. No, 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 I'm, and, so and, let and, me and, and, and this I'll is just, important, and this is important to the work um, because we do need to know who they are and w how they came to their assessments. Congressman, let me just finish, I'll, okay. I'll explain. So, sure. so often what will happen is they will, for example, be willing to participate in a conference or something along those lines that's not for us, and they will do it under Chatham House rules that says that we can't attribute, essentially, anything to them specifically, even though we can bring the information out. That's an example of the kind of challenge that we end up in. So we can't, what we have been able and willing to provide in classified or in unclassified, and we've given this obviously, is the basically the backgrounds of various experts that we've consulted with, the actually published information that we've relied on, director, and answer I'm, any questions director, about how we got to a conference. Director, I'm going to need and you to conclude. Got it. And I'll just finish with the last thing, which is that if there's anybody, sir, that you want us to talk to that you feel like we haven't, I commit to you that we will absolutely take those names and we will ensure that we are consulting with them as well. We're just trying to do the best job we can to, in the future, be able to pre pre predict a pandemic, <laughs> prepare for it, to protect the American lives, and to prevent one if we can. Mr. Gardner.